Hey there guys and gals, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews. I know, you're like, why are you in your car again? I, I, I'm picking up my kids from school, I didn't wake up early enough, had other stuff I had to do today, so I, a lot, lot of stuff going on. But, but I still wanted to get this video up and this is something I'd been wanting to talk about for a while, and it's why I think Xbox is going to win next console generation. So keep in mind, this is my opinion. Opinion. This is not stating that Xbox will win next console generation. This is just the evidence that I feel that has been brought forward to why Xbox might be able to pull off a win during the next console generation. So very clearly, it's obvious that Xbox didn't do all that well this console generation when being compared to Sony. While Xbox was still very profitable, they still did a good job. It's not like Xbox lost millions of dollars throughout the year. They still made money. They still made quite a bit of money. They just didn't do as well as Sony. And a lot of that comes down to their announcement at E3. So there was a lot of issues with DRM and maybe the console going mostly all digital and you'd have to have an always on connection. You know, stuff that during this console generation has kind of come to fruition with a lot of games, seeing as now you have a lot of online only games like Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch or um, The Division. You've, you've got a lot of games now that are online focused games. It has become a huge part of this console generation. Multiplayer has definitely taken over and I'm not saying that single player is dead. Obviously very much so. Single player is still alive and single player is very much so still very popular but those games are not really seeing the same longevity that a lot of these multiplayer games are like Fortnite. Fortnite is free but Fortnite has been going on now for a while. Same with Rainbow Six Siege. You pay for Rainbow Six Siege, but that game's been going on for three plus years now. It's a long while for a game to remain relevant. So, now, why do I think Xbox will, well, perform better than Sony next generation? So, one of the big slip-ups Xbox made was not being as powerful as the PS4 at launch. The Xbox One was slightly less powerful than the PlayStation 4. Obviously, Xbox kind of corrected a lot of that throughout the year. When you look at the Xbox One S, it is slightly more powerful than the PlayStation Slim. Or if you look at the uh, PS4 Pro versus the Xbox One S, Xbox again has the upper hand there. And power isn't everything. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to control everything. Uh, but I think Xbox will probably release with a slightly more powerful console than Sony just to make sure that they don't make that mistake again. But then you also have to take into account last generation Xbox was more expensive than PlayStation at launch by 100 bucks, And a lot of that had to do with them forcing Kinect upon you. And there were a lot of concerns with Kinect. You had, oh my god, it's always listening. Holy crap, this thing could be spying for the NSA. And you do have Microsoft, who is a company who is very willing to take on the NSA. Microsoft has taken on the government for requesting information before that, well, they didn't feel that they were required to give about their customers. And a lot of that has to do with protecting your brand and, well, protecting your customers. And if your customers think you're going to sell them out, obviously, they're not, they're not going to trust you very much. Now... When you look at Google, Google has rolled several times for the NSA. Uh, hell, for all we know, Amazon even has. We know Apple has before. But when you really look at this, we all kind of have invited smart home devices into our house. I'm not saying everyone has. I'm just saying for a huge part of it, a lot of people have smart home stuff in their house. And honestly, I was one of those people that thought, oh, I'd never have to worry. There's nothing I would say in front of one of these... Someone pointed out to me the other day that I think there's a lot of conspiracy revolving around the Federal Reserve, the FDA. I own a lot of guns. I've downloaded the Anarchist Handbook. I, I all of a sudden have started to realize, yeah, I kind of seem like one of those people that they just might want to listen to just to kind of keep tabs on. Though I'm not anyone they need to ever worry about. But a lot of those concerns are now stuff that we're now inviting into our house. That was a big slip up that Xbox made. And now it's one of those things that, well, Google's everywhere and so is Amazon. Now, 
With that being said, that's obviously not the only reason, because obviously this generation, big part of why Xbox hasn't really won has been, well, exclusives. Microsoft announced at E3 that they bought like 10 different studios. There were so many studios that Microsoft bought, it's hard to keep track of them all. So, obviously they're going to have exclusives next generation. It doesn't necessarily mean their exclusives are going to be better than Sony's, but they are definitely going to have exclusives. But then when you look at Xbox Live and PSN this generation, Xbox Live still performs better than PSN. While well, I am starting to become more of a fan of the way Sony's setup is set up, like the actual OS, um, I still do enjoy Xbox's setup better and a lot of the ease of use of using Xbox Live versus, well, PSN. Uh, now, with that being said, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be a driving point. Obviously, different people have different opinions on that. Not everyone prefers Xbox Live to PSN, um, but Xbox Live does tend to be a little more stable, and there's a little less connection issues. Uh, clearing up a NAT setting issue is very, very simple on Xbox Live, whereas it's next to impossible to get a Type 1 NAT, which is an open NAT, on Sony's system, unless you directly hardwire into your modem, which means you can't use your router. It's pretty hard to get to a Type 1 without that. Whereas Xbox, you just turn on UPnP and you're good. It's pretty much it. So, now there are still other reasons. I feel Xbox has become much more consumer-centered this generation when you look at services like Game Pass, where they charge $10 a month, you get access to 100 games, none of them are streaming, they are download. Even though Xbox is working really hard to bring a sufficient game streaming service to PC right now, and that doesn't mean that it won't ever come to Xbox, it's just their main focus is very clearly on PC game streaming. Now. When you take that into compare it to PS Now, um, PS Now kind of is nowhere near where Game Pass is, and PS Now is like triple the price. And that's not saying that PS Now hasn't made strides. Obviously, now some of the games they will let you download, but when you look at stuff like the backwards compatibility issue, PlayStation never really added backwards compatibility, and the only way you can really do backwards compatibility outside of someone uh, selling their PS2 games revamped for PS4 on the PS4 is by, well, using PS Now. So that's kind of a double-edged sword, whereas PS Now kind of looks like, oh, well, we're not going to make this because we can just charge you for this. And Sony even stated this generation that backwards compatibility was something that people ask for and no one ever uses. But now they have patents showing that it might actually be coming on PS5. That does not mean the backwards compatibility will be on PS5. It just means that it is something that Sony is at least toying with and thinking about. So, and they very clearly stated that it wasn't, you know, people don't, people don't actually use this when we give it. And Xbox obviously tweeted out showing statistics of, well, backwards compatibility use, and it looked very contrary to what Sony had stated at that time. But then you also have to look at the PSN store hasn't really added any way to return games. Outside of if you've never downloaded the game, Sony will credit you back in your PSN wallet. Whereas Xbox, I can literally sign in on my account and refund a game right there without even having to speak to an associate or anything. As long as I haven't played it for more than two hours and it hasn't been owned for over two weeks. So that's, that's at least a return policy. Sony's is if you haven't downloaded it. And how many people buy a game and don't instantly hit download? Now, to be fair, I do think you should do some research before buying a game. If it's a game you're obviously uncertain about, watch some streams, watch some people play the games. I would say watch some reviews, but those are just sort of hyped up trailers these days. Um, and then you got to look at like the PS Classic. So the PS Classic was obviously something that should have been amazing. Sony half-assed it to make some money. That's what it comes down to. I don't care what anyone wants to say about this all. Well, it's not their fault. It is their fault. It is PlayStation's fault that the PS1 Classic did not do well. Putting PAL games on your North American release of something was a stupid move to begin with. Just completely stupid. And then the fact that they didn't write the emulator themselves, they could have licensed that emulator and then touched it up to add features themselves. Or just wrote their own emulator from the ground up. 
Now, it's hard because you have Nintendo, which very clearly put a very high level of quality on these little portable plug-and-play consoles, and then you have Sony that looks like they just sort of copied Nintendo. And honest, honestly, the game lineup wasn't that great. I wanted it for Metal Gear um, and Grand Theft Auto. That was it. That was really the two games that I wanted really badly on that system. Both those games I just announced were running PAL versions, so I don't currently own a PS Classic. Now, uh, there are other moments where Sony has very clearly not listened to their fans or shown that they are not the most consumer-friendly when you look at the Vita and the memory card inc incident. And then Sony said the Vita failed because, well, handhelds just aren't that popular. While the Nintendo Switch seems to be doing damn well, and seeing as the majority of the people who play it play it in handheld mode over docked, that, that's actually a statistic that's been released. Now you have rumors of a handheld-only Nintendo Switch coming out, or even when you look at the 3DS and how well the 3DS sold, it's very clear handhelds are still relatively popular when the first-party company actually supports the device, and you don't lock it down behind overpriced well, PlayStation Vita cards. So you could have used SD, you could have used micro SD. There, there were a lot of issues where the Vita had failed. Um, and I mean, there's just a lot of instances where Sony has very clearly not really listened to their fans all that much. And there's been a lot of issues this generation where people have called out Sony for uh, bank chargebacks. If their card gets fraudulently used on PSN and they, use, they, they call and do a chargeback, well... Sony bans you if that happens. So there, there's a lot of issues right now going on to where I feel Xbox is going to become more competitive again. And I get it. This generation, they just they dialed it in. And a lot of it started off with the failure at the beginning of the generation. But then you have to look at how much they have pulled back and become a very consumer uh, centric company. And e even I get it, a lot of you don't like the whole games anywhere idea where you, there's no true exclusives because it's on PC. I'm not a PC gamer, I'm a console gamer. So it will always be a console exclusive to me. It will be an exclusive because I'm not going to play it on PC. And it's no offense to PC, honestly. There's a lot of things PC does better than console. A lot of things. Um, I just prefer console gaming. And we've stated this before. We've gone over why I prefer console gaming. But Xbox also was one of the first ones to really adopt the whole cross-play thing. There, there, there was cross-play between PC and Xbox for a majority of this generation before Nintendo even got involved. Xbox was doing really well with that. Um, with Gears of War or Forza, there was a lot of different cross-play available between those syst those platforms for Microsoft. And I feel that's a lot of goodwill to a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there that do own a PC and an Xbox. So me being able to be like, oh, well, I have a gaming laptop and maybe I want to save my game here, but maybe I want to take off where I left off because you can literally use your same saves due to cloud saving on the PC and on your Xbox. Or maybe I want to be able to play with my buddy who's on an Xbox or on a PC. You, you can do that. That's all stuff that Xbox really let happen this generation. Um, and Xbox really tried really hard to even get Sony on board with it. I mean, that was a huge conversation with Minecraft where Xbox really wanted Sony to get on board with that. And it was really evident when you saw that, well, Nintendo got on board with it and Nintendo and Microsoft decided to poke a little fun at Sony. And now you have Xbox coming over to the Nintendo Switch. We don't necessarily know to what capacity yet, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see how that works out. Um, but Xbox has become very open. They're literally turning the Xbox into PC for consoles. That, that's what's happening. They're tearing down a lot of those walls and a lot of those barriers and becoming a more open platform. It will be interesting to see if Xbox were to ever let like another game store sell games digitally on their platform. But to be honest, with Xbox having that return policy in place, they've got that pretty under control. No one's really going to complain too much about how they do that. So I am kind of curious to where you guys stand on this. Do you feel Xbox is going to be competitive again next generation? And do you feel they might actually make a comeback? Because when you look at the original Xbox, it didn't sell as well as the PS2, but then you look at the Xbox 360, it outsold the PS3, at least in America, and 
I mean, they became pretty even towards the end of the life, which is not really out of the question. And then you have the PS4 versus the Xbox One, where obviously Xbox fell very short compared to PlayStation. Again, they were still profitable. They still sold well. They just didn't hold out as well as PlayStation did. So do you think Xbox can become competitive again? Do you think Xbox might win next generation? Let me know in the comments down below. I am curious to what your guys' opinions on this situation are, and how do you feel about this? How do you think it's going to turn out? Do you think Sony made a lot of anti-consumer moves this generation? I mean, I do, and I mean, there's times where Sony did show they had faith in the consumer. I mean, when you look at PSVR, they really did support PSVR very well. Granted, I, I think it's a pain in the ass to set up every time you want to play it, but... Maybe PS5 will rectify that. Also, if you want to follow me anywhere else, links are as always in the description box down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a thumbs up. Those thumbs up help me grow the community and help me get more people here and more, more ways for us to have a conversation. More viewpoints and more people that can weigh in with their opinion on the specific conversation we're having. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ding the bell. If you don't do both together, it somehow becomes pointless because you have to do more than subscribe for YouTube to think you want to watch the videos. I don't know. I, I don't know. Also, I'll probably be live streaming some of the Division 2 beta later today on Twitch. So, Elaine, thank you for the uh, beta code access for the Division 2. I, I appreciate that uh, much much appreciated. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'll see y'all soon. I'll have plenty more content coming for you and stick around.